What's going on guys, it's J-Ho bringing you a brand new video and today we got more information regarding Destiny's next expansion, Rise of Iron. So in the previous video that I uploaded today on Rise of Iron, I went over the overview of what's coming out with Rise of Iron. We got new information on the raid, uh, we got a new PvE event in the Plaguelands, an arena event or arena mode, uh, we got a new light level cap. And also more information on some future live events coming uh, further after the release of Rise of Iron. So if you want to check all that out, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But in this video, I want to talk about the reinvention of the artifact slot along with some new weapons and armor that's coming out in Rise of Iron. So let's get straight into it. So first of all, Rise of Iron is redoing or revamping the artifact slot in Destiny for your characters. So basically in Rise of Iron they're adding 8 new artifacts that are revamping the artifact slots specifically. So we still can use some of the old artifacts from before Rise of Iron but I'd probably suggest not using them because these new 8 artifacts are going to be very good and game changing for your guardians. So each of these 8 artifacts resemble one of the fallen iron lords. And each of them have different abilities based on that specific Iron Lord. And you can combine these abilities with each of the subclasses or classes. And it's not class specific or any of that. So any class can use any of these artifacts. And they are very game changing abilities that add to different customization options, different character builds, different builds with their armor pieces as well. And it's going to be pretty interesting what we can come up with in terms of different builds with these artifacts now. So here's some screenshots of some of the artifacts. We're going to go through each of them and their abilities it will add to your guardians. So starting off with the first one, we got Memory of the Radagast and this one adds the new ability for sword heavy weapons letting you reflect energy based projectiles including everything from an ogre's eye blast to a crucible opponent's rocket so that's pretty interesting we got a new ability that lets you reflect if you're using a sword as your heavy weapon so that's really cool that's gonna change up a lot in crucible as well I wonder if people are gonna start using uh, swords instead and try to reflect people's rockets back at them instead of using a rocket themselves, especially in Trials of Osiris. So that's pretty cool. Pretty a new addition. I want to see it in PvE as well because that's going to be pretty interesting to see what types of things you can reflect back at some of the opponents or the enemies in PvE. The next one is called Memory of Perun and this one highlights enemies based on different things. So enemy guardians can be highlighted yellow if they have full super energy and also they can be highlighted red if they are low on health for easy targeting. So this one's not as good in my opinion just because you can already see when enemies have supers in Crucible. Um, you can tell when their box has a little glow around it, the level of their box, so the level 40 next to their name or their gamer tag is glowing if they have a full super energy that's how you can tell now in crucible but definitely this artifact makes it a lot more visible just because it's probably going to highlight their whole body or it's going to be definitely more distinct to see and i'm wondering if they are low on health and they have a full super energy at the same time does that mean they're going to be highlighted orange since they're both yellow and red so that'll be pretty interesting to see i don't know how that's going to work but yeah so that one's going to be a pretty interesting addition. The next one is going to be Memory of Jolder. And this one gives you the ability to completely eliminate the sprint cooldown. So this one is definitely one that I want to use or try out at least. I definitely dislike the sprint cooldown at times, especially in Crucible. In certain situations, I run out of my sprint and I can't sprint immediately after that. So I have a cooldown going on and it definitely costs me gunfights and battles sometimes in crucible so being able to eliminate that and not have to worry about the sprint cooldown is definitely helpful so i think that's a pretty good one the next one is memory of silamar and this one gives you the ability to dramatically reduce any damage inflicted through damage over time effects so this one's pretty interesting it definitely has a place in a crucible as well just because uh, Thorn is making a return in year 3. So I know Thorn did get nerfed from its original power back in year 1. But definitely back in year 1 this would have been an amazing artifact to have. And then even after the uh, Firebolt nerf. Um, when Firebolts were prominent and in its prime. This artifact would have definitely been helpful as well. So with those two getting nerfed. If 
we see a rise in damage over time effects from a gun or an ability, then uh, this would definitely be a helpful artifact to use. Going into the next one, we got Memory of Felwinter, and this one is the biggest one in terms of the most dramatic change out of any of the artifacts. So this one makes you lose your super ability, but you gain an extra grenade and extra melee charge and a boost to all your stats and orbs recharge your grenade and melee abilities. So pretty much you take away your super bar and instead you get an extra charge on both your grenade and your melee for whatever class you are. And also you get a boost in stats. I don't know how big of a boost that is. They're not specific on that. But that's pretty interesting. I definitely can see that one coming into play, especially in Crucible. Uh, people getting rid of their supers instead for more of the base abilities like grenade and melee. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see in play. The next one is called Memory of Gellion. And this one gives you the ability to gain a detailed radar at all times and radar persists when aiming primary weapons. So pretty much similar to the Knucklehead radar perk and also I assume a detailed radar is going to be similar to uh, the one that Night Stalkers have with Keen Scout. So that one's going to be pretty interesting to have on any subclass or any class. So that's really cool as well. The next one is called Memory of Scory, and this one gives a Guardian a glow that speeds up Super Recharge for all nearby allies. So this one's going to be pretty interesting, especially in Crucible and Trials of Osiris. Um, if we do have the ability to switch artifacts on the fly, just like you can do with weapons and armor pieces, then this one's going to be pretty interesting because I can definitely see people switching to this in the middle of a Crucible match or a Trials match just to speed up super energy for the final rounds if it's like a 4-4 at the very end or stuff like that. So this one can come into play quite a bit as well, speeding up super recharge for everyone on your team. And then the last one is Memory of Timar, and this one enhances your melee ability. So what this one does is when you melee a low tier enemy or minion of the darkness, it will turn them into one of your allies for 30 seconds. And if you melee them again after you turn them into your ally, I believe they will go back to normal. So back is your enemy. So pretty interesting. You can turn some minions of the darkness as your allies. That's pretty cool for PvE in my opinion. Um, but if we could have done it on a little bit higher tier enemies, that would have been a lot of more fun as well. So we'll see what lower tier enemies are considered. If it's only stuff like thralls and dregs, that's going to be not as fun. But if we can do a little bit higher tier stuff, like maybe some captains or stuff like that, that would be pretty cool as well. So the way we're going to acquire these new artifacts is through a new vendor named Tyra Karn, and she is going to be the centerpiece for acquiring these artifacts. She's going to be selling three Iron Lord artifacts per week, and they're on a rotation on a weekly basis. So over the course of eight weeks, we'll probably see all eight of the artifacts appear at least once. So that's how you can acquire any of these Iron Lord artifacts. And in order to purchase one of these Iron Lord artifacts, you need an item called Iron Lord's Legacy. And that is the currency to purchase one of these artifacts. So in order to gain one of those Legacy item pieces, you need to complete tasks or deeds in the Plaguelands in memory of the Iron Lords. So there's going to be a task given to you. And once you finish that task you're rewarded with that Iron Lord's legacy item and that is what you can use to purchase these artifacts. And then lastly I want to quickly talk about some of the new armor and weapons we're going to be seeing in Rise of Iron. So some of the armor sets we're going to be seeing are from Iron Banner the PvP event. We're going to see some Iron Lord's armor which you can obtain through that record book for Rise of Iron. Uh, there's going to be new Trials gear. We're going to see Wrath of the Machine gear which is the raid gear. And then we're going to see new gear from the Archon's Forge Arena event and also for the factions and vendors as well. So pretty cool stuff. We got a bunch of new ways to get armor. And then also there's going to be some new exotics. Of course I mentioned the thorn earlier when we were talking about the damage over time artifact. Uh, we're going to see the return of Galahorn obviously with uh, the Iron Galahorn and the regular one. Um, also what was shown was this image right here, an exotic version of the cost of the original white tier or 
common weapon that you start off with when you first create a character in Destiny. And this image right here actually shows the skill tree of the exotic cost of auto rifle. So there is a lot of customization going on right here with this skill tree. It's pretty cool. You can choose uh, how you want it to fire. You can choose some of the perks that we've seen before like counterbalance, rangefinder, hammer forge, stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. We got a bunch more customization especially with this weapon. I hope we see this with other weapons as well. So pretty exciting stuff. We got a bunch of new information and I can't wait to hear more in the future as well. So let me know what you guys think about all this new stuff. Thank you guys for watching as always. Like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more videos and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace!